First of all, thank you all so much for joining me today. And, uh, you know, we all knew this ruling from the court was coming, but n knowing it was on the way didn't make the news any less enraging or any less devastating. Friday's news was nothing less than a gut punch to all of us because after decades spent fighting to overturn our rights and put anti-choice judges on the bench, Republicans dragged our country backwards by half a century and ripped away every woman's right to make her own decisions about whether or not to keep a pregnancy. We're now a few days into this awful new reality and I just want everyone here to know I am furious, I am heartbroken, and I will never back away from this fight. I am so proud to represent a state that is committed to ensuring women can get the abortion care that they need and a state that has protected providers ability to help patients and that is working alongside our neighbors along the entire West Coast to protect everyone from the truly extreme laws that Republicans are putting in place across the country. But as everyone here knows, the court's ruling affects each and every one of us and every state in the union. Republicans' extreme laws are creating health crises as women in need of care drain their savings accounts to travel across state lines to get the services that they need. The providers that are here with us today know all too well what the extreme policies across the border in Idaho have meant for our clinics here in Washington State. And unfortunately, what clinics in our state and across the country have already experienced is just the tip of the iceberg. Friday's real ruling really broke the dam. And as more state abortion bans, including Idaho's, go into effect in the coming weeks, this crisis is going to get even worse. And of course, Republicans have made it abundantly clear that they are not going to stop here. They want a federal ban on abortion. Their extremism and really their cruelty knows no end. They want to overrule abortion protections in state like Washington uh, and elsewhere. They want to ban it everywhere and they are not being shy about it. Former Vice President Mike Pence said Republicans, quote, must not rest and must not relent until they ban abortion in every state. That is so chilling. So make no mistake, I am not backing down from this fight and I'm doing everything in my power to fight back. As Republican lawmakers rip away our rights, I am working to protect patients' ability to get the birth control they need covered for free and to protect the most sensitive health and location data because it never should be used against them. We are going to go to the Senate floor to make clear where the Democratic Party stands steadfast in our fight to protect reproductive rights and where the Republican Party stands, forcing women to stay pregnant when they do not wanna be, no matter the harm to their health or their life. I'm using my gavel as chair of the Senate Health Committee to shine a light on how the court's ruling has devastating implications for women. And I'm pushing President Biden to marshal the full force of the federal government and do everything in his power to protect access to abortion in America. We need this administration to take bold action and really push the envelope now to protect women in this country. And of course, I am still trying to codify Roe at the federal level. I pushed very hard to, protect, uh, to pass the Women's Health Protection Act in the Senate, but every single Republican voted against it. So to codify Roe, we know what we need. We need two more pro-choice Democrats in the Senate, and we need to protect our pro-choice majority in the House this November. And if we can get that, we can get this done. But this is a very dark moment for our country, and we need an all-hands-on-deck approach to protect our fundamental rights. So I'm very grateful today to hear directly from the providers who are with us today about what is happening on the front lines of this crisis. Uh, and before I turn it over, I just want to say thank you to all of the providers here. Day in and day out, in the face of harassment and attacks, you provide essential care that makes an enormous difference in the lives of your patients, and the care you provide saves lives. So thank you for all you do, and know I'm going to fight for 
all, everything we can to make sure that you have the ability to simply take care of your patients. With that, let me turn it over um, to Dr. Oyer. And, and you need to unmute. Thank you. Um, God, now I have a thing in front of me. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Great. So thank you very much. Your words are very welcome um, and very similar to mine, I must say. Um, so I'll try not to repeat too much. I'm a family medicine physician, and I have spent my whole career in reproductive health care. I'm currently medical director of Cedar River Clinics here in the greater Seattle area and clinical faculty um, at University of Washington in both family medicine and obstetrics and gynecology. And I have to say, I feel very, very lucky to have practiced when I did. Um, family planning is my passion. It is my calling. Um, and I just have loved it. The timing of this is interesting is that I was a senior in high school um, when Roe passed, and I am retiring this summer when Roe has been taken away. Um, and so it's coming at the very end of my family planning career. And I have to say, quite frankly, I'm devastated by the um, decision in spite of the fact that the questions asked at the Supreme Court led us to believe this could happen and in spite of the fact that the leaked document said very clearly that this was very likely to happen. Um, the fact that we're losing the ability to control our own bodies and our destiny is terrifying. But I also have to note once again there is no discussion at all of the men who have helped perpetrate the cause these pregnancies. And I think we have got to stop acting like this is just people with uteruses out there behaving badly. And I'm not saying anybody's behaving badly. This is an outcome of sex. Sex is a human drive, and this is what happens. So I think we need to talk about this in a much greater context than we do. That said, that's not what the Supreme Court decision said. The question about what is this gonna to do to us in Washington state as providers, Cedar River Clinics was founded in 1979. And because we are second trimester providers and late second trimester providers at that, we have seen patients from other states throughout um, our 40 years of history. The Guttmacher Institute says our numbers may increase by 385%. And it's sort of hard to imagine having essentially four times the number of patients we've had. And it's also unclear how it's really gonna sort out. Um, what will the number of patients be? What are the needs gonna be for financial resources and housing resources if people are driving in and flying in from other states? And then there's also for the providers in our clinic is what are the legal actions from the restrictive abortion states going to be on those of us who are providing the needed care for the patients from their states. We also don't know if our licenses and our malpractice insurance will be negatively impacted by the hostile states. So there's a lot that's left to be seen. And I have lots of friends and family saying, what do I need to do? Who do I give money to? And I give them ideas, but the truth is the next six to 12 months is gonna really tell us what is it that we need and where are, you know, where do the parameters end? And unfortunately, as you said, Senator Murray, I don't see an end. Um, the other thing that happens at times like this is confusion among both providers and patients. The day the Supreme Court decision came down, we got um, phone calls from our patients due to come in that day or the next week, all saying, is it still legal? Can I still come in? And I think we need to make it clear it is still legal here. It is still legal in most states, and that's going to change day by day. So preparing for the next stages, what kind of increase in patient numbers will we see? Time will tell. We don't know. Do we need to add back clinic days that we cut out during COVID? I think probably we will need to. And also, do we need more providers? Um, and there are providers in every state where it's um, been, where the rules have been drawn back that we'll talk to and see, do we need to add them? For now, I would say at Cedar River Clinics, we are happy to continue providing the care. We love seeing the patients regardless of where they come from, and we will do our best to help you get to us um, if need be. So on that, I'll stop there. I'll turn it over to Paul Dillon, um, and you can talk about from your standpoint where we're at. 
thank you so much, uh, Dr. Oyer, for all your work and um, at Cedar River Clinic. And just thank you so much, Dr. Patty Murray, for your powerful advocacy, your leadership, uh, your commitment to all of our patients. My name is Paul Dillon, and I'm the Vice President of Public Affairs for Planned Parenthood of Greater Washington and North Idaho, uh, zooming in from Spokane. Uh, like many of you, I woke up Friday morning to the devastating news that the Supreme Court officially ruled against the bodily autonomy of millions of people in the United States. I'm sad, I'm heartbroken, and I'm angry. For years, we've been sounding the alarm as lawmakers have been systematically stripping access to abortion one state at a time. This ruling already has had a ripple effect with bans enacted around the country. As Senator Murray pointed out, the anti-abortion movement and lawmakers have been planning this moment for decades. And we don't have to guess what the consequences of this decision will be. We've already seen the impacts in states like Texas where patients have had to delay care and travel hundreds of miles or be forced to carry pregnancy. They've even had to travel to us in Washington state. And don't get me wrong, there's always been barriers to access abortion and other healthcare services like the need to find childcare, take time off work and navigate the costs of transportation and lodging. But this decision means the number of people who will be forced to overcome these huge hurdles to essential health care will skyrocket because we know that banning abortion does not take away people's need to access abortion care, especially for Black, Latinx, Asian, and Indigenous women and transgender and gender non-binary individuals who are disproportionately impacted by discriminatory policies designed to rob them of their personal bodily autonomy and our rural patients. We've already seen the impacts in places like Spokane Valley, where 43% of our abortion patient visits are from Idaho. In Pullman, 62% of our abortion patient visits are from Idaho. That's year to date up 20% from the previous year. But know this, our health centers in Washington with our supportive and expert clinical staff continue to provide the care and resources you've come to rely on. We believe all people, no matter where they live, should have the right to control their own body, life, and future. It is unjust and unacceptable that more than half the states in the United States, including our neighbors in Idaho, are moving to rob patients of that right forced to overcome unjust barriers simply to access the abortion care they need and deserve. Abortion is not political, but it has been politicized. As champions of reproductive health care and abortion rights, we must clearly emphasize that abortion is health care. We aren't giving up. What we can take away from the Supreme Court ruling is recognizing the power we all have as individuals and as a community. Look at how many people have already shown up in the streets in the last week from Spokane to Moses Lake to Wenatchee to Bellingham. We know that Roe was the floor not the ceiling and moving forward, we know we can and will fight for a better world. We will rebuild and reclaim the freedom that is ours and we at Planned Parenthood will be here providing care and fighting alongside you all, no matter what. And now I'll pass it along to Kimberly, thank you. Hi, I'm Kimberly Kincaid, and I'm actually not a provider. I'm the assistant manager of the Vancouver Clinic of uh, Planned, Parent, uh, Planned Parenthood of the Columbia Willamette. Um, so we're the only Washington clinic um, aligned with a whole bunch of Oregon clinics down here, but we're down here in the corner providing care. Um, this is what I have to say. Uh, while Washington provides a strong protections to a person um, seeking access to abortion, having the Supreme Court remove these protections makes people who have a uterus feel extremely vulnerable and uncared for. This feeling of anger and sadness is experienced also by staff in our clinics and by patients who are seeking services other than abortions. 
working in any kind of medical care environment can be emotionally taxing. We are continually bearing witness to others' difficulties. Sometimes we can help, sometimes we can only provide a safe place to talk. When we're feeling overworked and stressed, it helps us to be doing something tangible right now, which is what we're doing here in the clinics. While we're also preparing to do even more, the Western states can provide a safe haven to these people. We have been preparing to see more people in our clinics and are utilizing telemedicine, medicine by mail, to increase access. We're also adding patient navigators, which is something that we hadn't had in the past. And these are people who can help uh, abortion patients um, basically navigate the system regardless of what they need, whether that's transportation, childcare, moving here from another state. Thank you. Patty Murray for inviting us here today. We want to provide the care no matter what. I'm not sure who I'm passing off to. Hi, my name is Anna Dowling and I'm an obstetrician gynecologist and also the medical director for Mount Baker Planned Parenthood. Um, I want to give my most heartfelt thanks to uh, Senator Murray for standing up and fighting this battle alongside us. Having agency over one's own body is the most basic element of freedom. When we allow a subset of our society to be stripped of the right to make decisions about their bodies and their health care, we lay down fundamental building blocks for a society that honors inequality and discrimination. We cannot pride ourselves on being a country that promotes freedom and the individual pursuit of happiness when we are only willing to extend these things to some members of society, not all members of society. The dismantling of Roe versus Wade destroyed the American promise of freedom for half of the population of our country. You absolutely can not be free when you live in a society that has the power to force you to bear a pregnancy against your own will. When I was in medical school, school, I remember that we celebrated the 30th anniversary of Roe versus Wade. And on that particular day, I was in a physiology lecture given by a cardiologist who had practiced medicine before Roe versus Wade was passed. And he spoke about septic abortion wards. He spoke about the cost of life and well being to women. And he implored all of us in that lecture hall to make sure that we protect this right. It is devastating to me that we have lost this right. And women will die. Women will suffer from the loss of this right. They will die of untreated ectopic pregnancies. They will bleed to death. They will die of infections and they will die of broken spirits. And we must rise up and make sure that every member of our society is free to live a life of their choosing without being restricted by laws that force them to do things against their will. And I think here in Washington, we need to not so much wonder how our numbers will change. We need to 
plan to increase our numbers and welcome in the women from states that no longer have the freedom to control their own bodies. We need to break down the barriers that will prevent women from being able to travel here to get the care that we need. We need to find ways to provide funding, to provide childcare, to provide access, it is incumbent upon those of us who live in a state where we still have personal freedoms to ensure that every member of our country gets to enjoy those same freedoms. It has become our responsibility to make sure that other women get to enjoy the same quality of life that we are so lucky to have here in the state of Washington. So again, I want to give my deepest thanks to you, Senator Murray, for making sure that women are cared for and treated as equal members of our society. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you to, to all of you uh, for, for your statements today and your helping us understand what the impact here is in Washington. And uh, obviously we will see an increased number of patients in Washington state. We want people to know that we welcome them here, but the costs of that are something we don't yet know. You're already seeing part of it. Um, and several of you mentioned the challenges for people to come here, whether it's travel or childcare or just the capability to take time off from your job is gonna be, um, a, a, it's gonna create a real system of injustice in the United States of America for women. Um, and in addition, I think we have to all remember that this is not the end of the line for Republicans. I hear them every day, we see them out there. They want a federal ban on abortion. Uh, and in the meantime, they are working hard to take away Medicaid abortion and ability for people to get um, a medication in the mail. Uh, that will impact patients across the board. So this is an all on fight to make sure we are doing everything we can for women to get access here, but we have to keep fighting to make sure we put into law uh, row nationwide because um, the in injustices and the inequality are gonna continue. And we have to fight back on the coming battles that I can tell you are coming. I've seen this coming, this day coming, and I see a future day coming if we don't stand up and fight back. So thank you to, to all of you. Uh, and before I, I turn it over to the press, I did, I did wanna just ask if any of you have heard any personal stories from any of your patients that really moved you that you could share. Go ahead and jump in, any one of you. I'm, I'm happy to share a story. I mean, I hear personal stories from my patients every single day, stories that completely move me and make me recognize how important it is to, to protect this right for, for women. But recently I had a patient who had three young children, been left by her spouse and the father of those children. She had moved across the country from the East Coast to Washington State because she had family here that she could live with while she was trying to rebuild her life. And she discovered that she was pregnant. And you know, I, I think that what's important is that even when women know in their heart of hearts that they cannot bring a child you know, into the world, it's it's not fair to that child, it's not fair to the children they already have, they still are distraught and torn up over having to make that decision. It is not one that is taken lightly. And um, I think as providers, we, we know, we see that, you know, this is a decision that uh, is very difficult to make. The burden of it, as, you know, Dr. Oyer already explained, is almost always placed squarely on, you know, the woman without support from the person who, you know, in, was participating in the conception. I think, I think that it's, you know, it's something that, um, you know, we, we recognize, like, through the work that we're doing, we're allowing, you know, women to live the, you know, a better life, a freer life, one that, you know, that allows them to take care of, you know, the responsibilities that they have. And so I, I, I see my patient's face in my mind all the time. And I recognize that, um, you know, what, what I do for them changes 
their life. Yeah, and you want them making that decision, not a politician telling them, which is what, what happened with Roe being overturned. And that to me is the, the fundamental issue here of whether that woman and her doctor and her faith makes that decision or whether it's imposed on her by a politician, which overturning Roe essentially did.